Hello everyone, welcome to Zinc Tennis Vlog. Today we're going to be talking about working hard. This is a one that's dear to my heart because you know, I came from a small town in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania where there weren't a lot of tennis players. Actually, by this is no bragging, but by the time I was 12 years old, 13 years old I think, I won the county championship. So I was the best player in the town, and that's not saying much because my town was pretty small. It was awesome, but it was a small town. So I learned at an early age that my work ethic would take me a long way. So each and every day I went out there, usually against a ball machine, and I would just work as hard as I possibly could. And what I found out when I would go to national tournaments, sectional and national tournaments, is that I find out that my work ethic would pay off because a lot of the kids, they weren't working hard. So one of the things that I you know, kind of talk about is what does working hard look like? And I think a lot of the kids are, are, are confused. You know, I think sometimes they, you know, relate winning to working hard. And that has really nothing, working hard and winning don't have really anything to do with each other other than you start to win when you do work hard. <laughs> but one of the things I want to talk about is what are, the, what are the keys and what are the things to look for in somebody when they're, to tell, to be able to tell whether they're working hard. So one of the things that I like to tell my kids is if they're out there with other people, I want you to look around. I want you to, let's say I'm out on the court with three other people. I want them to, I want them to look around and to see everybody's feet, to see everybody the way they're moving. Are they moving fast? Are they recovering fast? Are they engaging between shots, you know, with their feet in between shots? That's so important. Um, so I want you to kind of focus on that. And then the other thing is, is that, like we talked about, you know, the parenting advice, I don't want you, the parents to come, you know, I don't want the kid to come off the court and say, you just weren't working hard. What I want you to do is I want you to show them. I want you to show them some kid that you know or another student that's working hard. So the best way that you learn how to work hard is having a mentor and learn by example. That is really, really important. Instead of just saying, you know, John, you didn't work hard today, you know, that's easy to say. But again, you know, from my parenting advice from yesterday or the day before, you don't, you just say that, that means nothing, right? You really want to talk about to them about who is working hard. Show them examples. The other big one that I use is the sweat level. And I know that in the north it's kind of hard because, you know, we're indoors. But I used to play a, 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 a sport called platform tennis and we played outside in 30 degree weather. And within 30 minutes of me being out on the court in 30 degrees, I would be in shorts and a t-shirt and I would be sweating. And the reason is, is because I was moving my feet, engaging my feet in between shots. And I think that sweating is such a, a, a indicator of whether you're working hard. If you watch even the best of the best, you know, the women, the men, the best of the best, they sweat. There's one guy that might be a little bit of a, an exception to the rule is Roger Federer, but he's a kind of a freak of nature, you know, but even he sweats, you know, but if you look at Rafa, you look at Murray, you look at Serena, these guys are sweaters, you know, and the reason they're sweating is because they work hard. So I always look at that as like, if you come off as dry as a bone, it means you weren't working hard. Now, again, you don't want to just say to Johnny, hey, Johnny, you're not sweating, right? Because that's what I hear the parents saying, Johnny, you're not sweating. That's, it's not what we want to say. We want to figure out what we can do to get them to work hard. So we show them how to move their feet. And, and, and you know, sometimes I, that's when I do fed ball drills. I'll do fed ball drills to engage them. And uh, Rick Macy does this great drill called the pocket drill. And the pocket drill forces the kid to move to each shot. So then they have to move their feet. Uh, you know, I see a lot of uh, students today that reaching for the ball, like their feet are behind the baseline and they'll get a, a ball inside the baseline and they reach for it instead of moving their feet inside the baseline, outside the baseline, you know, called moving your feet in the pocket. That is so big. But the more you move your feet, obviously the more you're going to sweat. And the more you sweat, the more I know you're working hard. Now there's a, an opposite to that that can that kind of happen to me. This is from my experience is that when I work hard, you know, it's not like a linebacker in football where you want to be really tense. So you want to almost separate the lower body from the upper body. And you know, the lower body works really hard, but the upper body stays relaxed. I think a lot of times when, when I was younger and I worked hard, I would get my muscles would really get tight. And then I would get a little bit more nervous than I should. And that's where we're going to have another talk in a couple days about yoga and meditation. 
But that's where yoga and meditation come in to, for my practice today. And my kids do medit- you know, yoga and meditation to try to get their upper body to be relaxed and their lower body to you know, be engaged. So these are all key things about, you know, that we're looking for to try to get the kid to work harder and harder and harder. The other one I want to talk about is, you know, we talk about the recovery after hitting the shot, but there's two splits, right? If you watch Novak Djokovic playing, there's two splits. There's the one after he recovers and the person's, you know, when he's recovering to get ready for the next ball. And then there's the split when they're hitting the ball, you know, right before they hit the ball to be able to change directions. So you want to, my, my daughter just reminded me, you want to call that the pop pop, right? One split after your recovery to, so you can change. And then the one split is happening when they're hitting the ball. So you should always see that, you know, wide stance, you know, as wide as you can, so you can change direction and be able to shoot out each way. And then really just the feet constantly moving. And then you can rest in between, you know, in between points, you can relax and take a breather, but in between shots. So when you're hitting, engage your feet and don't stop your feet no matter what. Um, So let's make sure that we're going to focus on what, when we're working. And again, we're not going to relate winning to, you know, working hard. That is not winning has nothing to do with working hard. What has to do with it is trying your hardest, focusing, moving your feet and staying dialed in. And the other thing too is that when you're working super hard, the negativity should be at a minimum. You don't want to be really, you know, super negative because then that stops our feet. So you want to keep moving those feet as much as you can. So work hard, play hard, and I guarantee you that you're going to have amazing success. Have an awesome day.